Hello, my name is Brendan Moy. I'm an academic at the Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Thanks for showing interest in my academic research presentation titled Supporting Physical Education Teacher Education Students to Implement an Alternative Pedagogy on their professional experience. I've started with it quite because I think it shows a concern for physical education teacher educators like myself and highlights the need for an alternative to the traditional approach. Just my story is I embarked as an educator in phys ed teacher education in 2008 after 24 years as a health and phys ed teacher. I wasn't as aware of the problems with the traditional approach until I had, I suppose, opportunity at uni to really think about it and research it and read a lot. And what really shocked me the most was the growing unpopularity of phys ed in schools. Therefore, my idealistic crusade was to arm future generations of teachers in Queensland with an alternative phys ed teaching approach. It's been an interesting research and teaching journey, and this presentation documents where I'm currently at. So these approaches, like TGFU, have been promoted within phys ed teacher education courses across the world for probably around 40 years. It made a little impact, just to show you how long ago that was. The very young guy in the photo is me. That's my first day of teaching in 1984. No idea about any other alternative approaches to phys ed teaching except what I was taught and what the university was, was telling me to do, which was really about um, getting students fit and active. That was the mantra we had when I was at university. So back to the traditional um, versus alternate approaches. The question is how do educators typically prepare teachers pre-service teachers to implement alternative approaches. So typically what happens is the principles are introduced in the university at, like in, from a theoretical perspective and then small groups of university peers um, um, implemented the approach. So pre-service teachers take turns of teaching their peers, which is micro-teaching, or experience it firsthand as students. Then, after that experience, they're encouraged to implement it on their professional experience or practicum. Unfortunately, this university micro-teaching experience hasn't been effective in achieving this aim. Therefore, there needs to be an alternative. Here's an alternative then that's been um, proposed by university researchers, and it's all about bridging the gap between the coursework and the school practicum. So to do that, researchers suggested an alternative practical university teaching experience in which small groups of pre-service teachers work together in collaboration with a pedagogical expert in a community of practice. And within that community, they explore the implementation of alternative pedagogy in an authentic physical education setting. I decided to try this with my fourth year students and then document its impact because I found that after they experienced the constraints-led approach in their second year, they became very strong advocates for the approach and showed an encouraging desire to implement it in schools. Um, however, they did not have the skills, the depth of knowledge to authentically implement it in practice. Just to give you some background, the constraints-led approach is very similar to TGFU and other games-based approaches. Its um, learning design and delivery is grounded in motor learning theory. Um, of ecological dynamics, and the same mode learning theory can underpin TGFU. So just like other courses, I used to use micro-teaching, so I decided to evolve and use this new um, alternative approach. I contacted the local school, which was just next door to the university. Um, I was able to get phys ed classes taught at our, at, at our university campus by our pre-service teachers and they work together to plan, implement, observe, interpret and evaluate learning and teaching within these physical education classes, which were half the typical size to allow the students to be able to learn in a, in a simpler environment. And I just focused observation. So when we looked, we had a shared lens through which we watched the lessons and interpreted them. And it was effective um, because what actually happened was that students learnt to... Um, develop learning environments that embedded principles of the constraints that approach like representative learning, design task simplification, and also constraint manipulation. It's a really good quote there of a student who's really had a good experience learning, something a bit different that they hadn't experienced before at university and something that you know, I was very happy to read, of course, as, as anyone would. 
So this is the next step. This 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 current study is about following these same pre-service teachers on their journey and investigate if what they learn at university transferred into their teaching practice while in their subsequent subsequent school practicum. So the 36 of the 40 pre-service teachers who participated in the previous study um, and participation involved undertaking the course requirement of the four weeks of supervised professional experience in an Australian secondary school, commencing a week after completion of the pedagogy and curriculum unit that incorporated the university teaching experience. So that's six weeks of teaching the local school students in collaboration with myself and in groups. Um, they experienced that, had a week, and then went straight to a school to, um, to teach on practicum. So when they returned to university, they submitted a reflection about how their practice was influenced by what they did at university. So on practicum, the pre-service teachers demonstrated an ability to design and deliver learning activities that authentically embedded the principles of the constraints-led approach. You know, it was just like they did at university. So it was a really powerful um, results to get, and I was very happy that they could actually do that because that was what I was setting out to do. Just as an example then, so... When confronted with the problem of developing students' technical skill, pre-service teachers demonstrate an ability to design and implement simple, representative, constraint-led games. So this showed that they could embed the principle of representative learning design in their teaching. So I'll let you have a bit of a read of that student's um, reflection, which they did after the end of, of, of their prac. And the key there is as they learn at university, the closer the skills um, in games, um, practice games or practice tasks, the greater transference of, of learning will be. And also implemented games that weren't repetitive stationary passing deal, drills, but also like 2v9 in grids. What's really good is they validate what they do, or they justify what they do by using some theory with regards to coordinating perception, decision making, action together, which you don't do when you stand stationary and throw a frisbee back and forth. They also embedded the principle of task simplification and they simplified the learning environments to better match their students' ability level. Extremely important um, principle to have because many environments are too easy for students, many environments are too difficult. So to match them, and I know there's a diversity in a class, they aimed at the poor, poorly performing students and they identified rate limiters that restricted their performance and manipulated task constraints to overcome them. So an example there of a rate limiter is in the game of basketball, passing and catching was poor because of defensive pressure, according to the student. So what they did in the game, they got um, they relieved defensive pressure and had 3v1 games, which is really smart and really good that a student could do that. Very importantly, as we all set out to do, we want our students to learn. So from their perspective, they saw a development in their students' technical and tactical abilities. And the reason for doing that was they allowed them time and space to develop their abilities. You can understand 4v4 as opposed to 4v1 gives students the opportunity to develop passing and catching because of the time and space. So there's an example there of, of what that student um, reflected upon. The question then was why was the environment so successful at university in its transfer to practicum? And I believe the main reason was the integration of the constraints principles and the modal learning theory into the design and delivery of the university teaching experience. For example, it was representative. So what the students experienced at university was representative mainly because there was real school students in the authentic class. So the advantage of that was learning to implement the constraints approach with a class of 13 to 14 year old students gave pre-service teachers the opportunity to observe and interpret realistic student performance outcomes. So having that information available allowed them to develop the ability to identify and propose rate limiters or reasons for their performance and, it's, and then also be able to explore learning environments to overcome their impact. Now this happened over a period there. So pre-service teachers at university were observing students' poor throwing and catching skills. As you can see in the picture there, um, you can understand from that picture there, the defensive pressure and the congestion were the two problems. So over a period they learned that they needed to overcome them. So they designed games where defenders had to stand two metres away from the play of the frisbee. They designed smaller games of 4v2 where there was more space and there was more opportunity to have free players in space to pass to. 
So when they went to university, uh, to prac, they had the similar situations and they could apply what they'd learned at university, university to similar type student performance outcomes. The task was also simplified at university so that what could be happened was because student teachers or pre-service teachers are developing their ability and they've had limited experience, you need to give them an environment that's simplified. So working in groups of five to six under the guidance of an expert and teaching lessons to half of a size class, not 24 students but 12 students, simplified the environment for them. They also um, were successful on their prac because at university they had, they had the opportunity to develop the tactical and technical understanding of Frisbee that could be applied to the teaching of similar invasion games. So 26 of the 36 taught invasion games on prac. So previous research has found that a lack of these attributes was a hindrance when trying to implement an alternative. So for example, when students during university, they learned how to overcome the rate limiter in Ultimate Frisbee. So therefore, when they had a similar problem in congestion in an invasion game, they had the skills that they've learned before to be able to solve that problem in sports like netball and football. The other reason was the environment was very supportive, which is a really important thing that research will tell you. The reason it was um, supportive for these students was that pre-service teachers attended their practice the year before there was a change in the Queensland syllabus in senior physical education. I was actually recruited to rewrite the motor learning unit because it was outdated and embedded the constraints-led approach. Thus, um, there was disciplined leaders across schools in Queensland that needed to learn more about the constraints approach. I did a lot of presentations and started to educate them about the approach. Therefore, what happened was that when students from my university came to their schools, they were supporting their implementation. And they actually were envisaged as leaders or agents of change. As you can see in that um, quote there, the staff meeting, they were seen as being a bit more of an expert. And obviously that's because the teachers weren't really um, adverse in it at that point. So it was a very positive thing for them. Finally, where to from here? You can see that quote, the quote's a beautiful quote from a head of school, uh, in, uh, head of the HPE at a school, basically saying that there's some students that are exploring the approach as beginning teachers. So building on the findings of the, to this point, the next step in the evolution is to formalise that type of research and investigate the impact of these experiences through university and practicum on beginning teachers. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation and can implement some of the findings. Please contact me if you have any questions. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.